rpmnation.com. <laughs> Honest to goodness, right down in front of me, a deer. Cars locking up the brakes. All of it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you don't see that every day. Now we know we got about 32 seconds. Yeah, don't see that every day. <laughs> oh, so I'm sitting here getting ready to launch. Well, because I still kind of miss, uh, what was it, a week ago today where I was doing the show from alongside of the road. I was giving you a traffic report. So I'm sitting there this morning, right? I have a, 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 the studio was street level, looking right out the glass, and all of a sudden two cars lock it up. Right in front of me. You hear the tires screeching. Up, and all of a sudden, a deer. It's downtown Aurora, second largest city. State of Illinois. And just here comes a deer. Sprinting right down. It leaped not five feet from me. In front of the windows. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a sign of something good happening today. All natural being. Warning, All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Unbelievable. Sure. You gotta be ready. Never get I mean, I don't know why. I've seen deers out running around in other places. Just, I've seen a lot. As you know, if you've been with me, I think this is day forty now. If you've been with me, Brian Brody, all natural being, coming to you from the Metropolitan Co-working Space, beautiful downtown, home of rampant running deer, Aurora, Illinois, and of fourteen blends. You've been with me from the beginning, you know, from time to time. We see some river otters, as it were, <laughs> rolling around, walking by. But never a deer, and almost an accident. I thought people were just like, oh, hey, that's where the show is. They were stopping by. Always nice to meet a fan. Here they are locking up their brakes. They weren't coming to see me, <laughs> trying to keep having a head on with a deer. Which, which makes me think, talk about deer in the headlights. Let's just do this real quick and then... <laughs> We'll jump into the show. Did you see this? I saw it on the news. It's all over the internet. San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. I guess yesterday, maybe the day before, sometime in the last couple of days. A couple of pranksters decide to go in a museum, and they just take a pair of glasses. Not To be honest, not even a really nice-looking pair of glasses. You know, those glasses go. Just take a pair of glasses... Put them down on the floor and walked away from them. Art museum. Small, tiny frame. Nothing on the walls. Wooden floor. Just a piece of, uh, just glasses. So before too long, photographers, looky loos, onlookers, whatever you want to call it, people think it's art and it draws a crowd. Photographers lying on the floor trying to get the best shot. Everybody, oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. I wonder who did this. <laughs> Deer in the headlights. And it's got to make you wonder, what has happened to the human mind? We talked yesterday about, you know, it was our species on the verge of extinction. And here... You have a couple practical jokers. Put glasses on the floor. And everybody thinks it's art. There's one particular picture of, and I shouldn't say, who who am I? I wasn't there. But there's one particular picture is a couple of, of a couple standing there. 
And I can imagine one of the two going, how is this art? And then you can, you can picture in your mind the other one. Let's just say it's the guy, all right? Let's just say the guy go, well, I think it's a very interesting commentary that life is... Oh, I don't know. You could say life is the glasses. Life is the way you look at things. Life is to who knows whatever. But you can imagine them standing there pontificating for an hour about, oh, well, you know, that, that's some artist. Oh, how, how insightful. How reflective. How brilliant. Cutting edge art. <laughs> and, and technically, they could have fallen off the back of a janitor's cart. I mean, they don't even look like they're necessarily positioned all that perfectly. Nothing on the wall. Wood floor. Wood floor. Good morning, all. Say hello to my friends. Walking down the street here. Glasses lying on the floor. Everyone thinks it's art. So again, I ask, what has happened to the human mind? Welcome to All Natural Being. As the announcer said a couple minutes back, I'm Brian Brody. Welcome to the number one show today. I think it's day 40 of our broadcast. The number one show here on IPM Nation. Five-star rating on iTunes. Numbers growing every day. And do you know why I think that is? Not me. You can find any, anyone to sit here and do this show. You know why I think that is? I think because it's touching a nerve. It's getting to the root of who you ultimately are. Because this is a show about you. Not the watered-down version of you, as I say every morning. Not the watered-down version. The real you. The true you. Not the fictional fairy tale you. But the factional you. The real, true you. And I'm fired up to do it every single day because I think, I'm being terribly selfish to be honest, I think the more people that tap into their all-natural being, the more people that begin to release their inner superhuman, the better world we're going to have to live in. Better world my kids and my grandkids. Long after I'm gone home. The better world we will have if more inner superhumans start to you know, bring their road show to the world around them. So let me ask you, what's a part of your roadshow? What are you here to do? What are you here to do? What is something that grabs your spine, that quickens your heart, makes your pulse jump out of your neck? When you think about that, that's a pretty good set of signs as to that might be something that you're here to do. And if you're not confident Everyone says, oh, you got to find your purpose. Oh, I don't know what I'm here to do. I, I'm, I'm still looking for my purpose. And as you know, if you've listened for any time now, forget that. It's, it's crazy talk. Ask yourself one question. Who am I? Who am I? Because once you identify who you are, all this other stuff falls into, into place. This 20-minute victory this morning. It is the meandering mind, not the girdled, that always finds its path. Taking life as it comes, living in the labyrinth, here with a destiny, fate's trying to derail you, then you have to decide, will you win? Are you going to whine about the fact that you let fate derail you? I love this short little riff. I guess you could call it a a, a one-sentence piece of poetry. Poet John O'Donohue, the late John O'Donohue. Quote, I would love to live like a river flows, carried by the surprise of its own unfolding. Good morning. I would love to live like a river flows, carried by the surprise of its own unfolding. What a great way of putting living life in the labyrinth. Whatever comes your way, whatever happens, whatever hits, I'm in. Bring it. I can handle anything. I have the confidence, inborn, batteries included, I have the confidence to pull off anything you throw at me. So let's see what unfolds. Now, I don't want to go all egg and sperm biology on us this morning, but the very essence of human life is an unfolding 
The way the human body is built is an unfolding. Got some cells, a couple little genetic roadmaps, so to speak. And from conception on, you begin to unfold. At birth, it's an unfolding. As you grow, it's an unfolding. You don't have any control over it. It just unfolds. So you can either go, oh, I don't like the way it's unfolding. Or you can throw yourself into the flow and say, I'm willing to take, I'm ready to take, I'm absolutely capable of taking whatever life throws at me. Whatever it is. And you do it with a smile on your face because you know who you are. When you ask yourself above all the craziness, above all the lunacy, when you know who you are, the universe itself sits up and takes notice. Because the universe, God, the divine, however you decipher and define it in your daily life, it's had just about enough of people at an art gallery going, oh, that pair of glasses, that's just brilliant. Who would have thought of that? <laughs> the universe is like, wait a minute. We give you a human mind capable of damn near anything. And you can be brainwashed. You can be played. You can be conned. You can be convinced. Really? Makes me think back to yesterday. We talked about stress. And all I'm suggesting is if you're going to own anything, if you're going to own something, why not own your mind? Own it. It works for you. You don't work for it. So as I see it, there is only one fork in the road. The memory of who you truly are. Or the path to stress. So let's look at stress. What is stress? Stress comes from our expectations. Oh, it may not work out the way I planned. Uh, uh, newsflash, da 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 just this in. It's not designed to work out the way you planned. It's designed to throw its plan at you and see how you channel your inner superhuman, how you channel your all-natural being, how you bring your grit to the grind confidently, passionately, and go, hey, I can take whatever you throw at me. So carrots at the end of the stick are what cause stress. And again, our brainwashing started early and often. We've been played and conned and convinced that we need outside help. Again, when we're very early on in life, as we unfold, we need training wheels and water wings. But at some stage of our life, it's like, really? You saw me riding down the street today on a bicycle with training wheels? Would you go, come on, Brian. <laughs> it's time to learn balance. You see me at a pool? Be honest. Be honest. If you go to a public pool and you see me there, and I have one of these big rings around my waist with a little dinosaur head, some type of flotation device, you going to let your kids in the pool next to me? No. So what happens to you and I? We start to unfold. We need some training tools. We need some flotation devices. After that, we toss them to the side. But from the very earliest days of life, we're asked, what are you going to make of yourself? What do you want to be when you grow up? Forgetting that you're already a badass at birth, we're given a human brain, a human mind, human confidence. Oh, that's not enough. Got to know what you want to become, what you want to be. What are you going to do? Forgetting just for a moment that you've always had everything you've ever needed to bring your own bold, your own unique brand. Because when it's all said and done, that's what you're here for, to bring your brand to the world stage. Now, your world stage might be a little smaller than the world world, The stage might be 
your reflection in the mirror. Stage could be your family, your friends, your extended family, your extended friends, your community. Whatever that stage is, you bring your own bold when you remember who you are. And all this stress, you know, I thought about it. I think about it often. One day I'm going to start a company called Thought Watchers, right? Because it's not about weight. We've got all these people running around. I got to be thin, got to be thin, got to be thin. No thinking, but just focusing on being thin. I saw an article, 76% of the people in the United States are alleged to be overweight. Overweight by whose standard? The same type of self-help industry tactic that advertises to us, that cons us, that plays us, convincing us that 2% body fat is the only way to go? Who says? Who says that you can't look in the mirror and be absolutely thrilled with who you already are? Because it's not about losing weight. It's about losing our binge thinking. Fascinated by the study of Weight Watchers when you see that they sell a program. It helps people. They lose the weight that they want to. They lose the weight that they want to, not Weight Watchers. They lose the weight. They quit the program. And when the weight gain comes back, they blame themselves. So Weight Watchers has got a great gig going. All the good goes to them. All the crap goes to you if you fall off the wagon. I never tell you that it's the very thoughts. It's the very stress. Oh, you got to be thin. Got to be thin. Got to be thin. Who says? Who says? Who says you don't get to be comfortable in your own skin, whatever the size of that skin may be? Now you want to get out, you want to go for a walk, maybe a little jog, ride a bicycle around, hike in the woods, play with your kids in the backyard. You want a little bit of aerobic exercise? Great. That's what the human body is built for. Fantastic. But who says otherwise that you don't get to be comfortable in your own skin? It's left over from childhood. Got to have more. Got to have a carrot on the end of the stick. More, 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 more. So the mending of our minds, which you absolutely deserve, there is nothing wrong with you being devoted to yourself, which is why I ask every day, can you give me 20 minutes, a 20-minute victory? Oh, and we'll get to announce uh, today the winner of our second 20-minute victory. Well, I'll just I'll leak it real quick. It's Patricia. And as I promised in the very beginning, I'm never going to give out people's last names because maybe, <laughs> look, maybe you're like my own extended family. Very few people like to admit they hang out with me. That guy's crazy. <laughs> in any event, bottom of the hour, we'll talk a little bit about Patricia and the winner of this week's 20-minute victory, which you can get in line for. If you like, you can try. You can throw your name into the pool by going to allnaturalbeing.com. Let's trade some emails. You give me yours. I'll give you mine. And then, you know, reach out to me. You can reach out me at Twitter, at Brian Brody, on Facebook. As you know, you can always call me 331-684-SOUL, 331-684-7685. Give me an idea what you think about the show. Getting a, a, a text right now from someone from the, uh, let me see, National Library. Very nice. Hopefully they brought their headphones with them. Thank you for taking me along. I love being in libraries. Allnaturalbeing.com. Leave me your email. I'll leave you mine. I'll email you back. And we could start planning a 20-minute victory for you. Could be. Might be you. Could happen. And all we do in that is say, okay, for the next 20 minutes, what if you devoted that 20 minutes to yourself? The hell with everybody else, everything else, all the stress, all the mishugana, all the carrots on the end of the stick. Snap the stick, blend the carrots into a juice, and pour it into the drain. For 20 minutes, what if you were devoted to yourself? Because I think you're damn well worth it. 20 minutes, one seventy-second of your day. 
As I say to people all the time, if at the end of the 20 minutes, this doesn't stir something in you, it wasn't meant for you. You're not at the stage of unfolding where this is going to make sense. But you're worth one 70 second of your day to be devoted to the eyes you see when you look in the mirror. And when we look around today, we've been convinced, we've been played, we've been conned. Oh, we got to be 2% body fat, got to be thin. You got to be this, you got to be that. Boatload of people running around thin, not just in weight, but in in the, the ability to use their own brains. What we need to thin out is the binge thinking that convinces us. We talked yesterday about people that are obese on airplanes. The single greatest stress is what they think people think about them when they look at them. Then they get all stressed. They get all depressed. What do we do? We go to get something to eat. So I'm going to come up with thought watchers. No more weight watchers, Meshugana. I'm going to come up with thought watchers, and I'm going to say don't worry about binge eating because when you handle the binge thinking, that's not going to be all that big a deal. Now, that's not to say if you want to be thin, God love you. You want to be a little heavier, God love you. What does it really matter? As long as your head and your heart are in the right place, what do we care what size package skin bag we have? Now, when it comes to affecting your health, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a licensed clinical anything. (laughs) But it comes to maybe your weight is so much, packing on a few more, more, more pounds that might be physically healthy, then let's go for a walk. We don't have to be an Olympic swimmer. We don't have to be a javelin expert. We don't have to ride our bicycle 150 miles. Just go for a walk. It's your body was built to do. Take your walk and your, take a walk for your body and your mind. Get out. Push your mind to its cognitive cutting edge. But this stress that we have, the stress of conformity, of fitting in, not just to what the people around us think, but we're buying into what advertisers tell us. People say, oh, never be unhappy again. I dig the times that I'm unhappy. I dig the times that I'm unhappy. Because it's been my experience that shortly after you're unhappy, you figure it out, now you're happy. (laughs) The advertisers that can sell us more stuff, right? They create the shtick. Ah, you better be 2% body fat. Got to be thin as a rail. Or you always got to be happy. Or whatever the, the list. Got to be optimistic. Got to be pessimistic. Whatever it is. And as soon as they convince you of the shtick, then they can turn around like a good self-help industry tactic, convince you of the shtick, and then they get all the stuff that they can sell you to help with that disease, with that ailment, with that syndrome. That's a good one. Oh, let's make it a syndrome. Well, I've got a syndrome for you. Let's call it heartburn for your head. Here's my... <laughs> syndrome of the day people want you to be amnesic they love that you have blind spots they love that you don't recall who you are at your core why because it's easier for them to get you to dovetail to their vision You, you have a vision of your own you're going to an art gallery see a pair of glasses on the floor I don't know about you I'm picking them up and taking them to Lost and Found. That's just me. (laughs) Figure some poor guy running around. Can't see because he doesn't have his glasses. That's you and me. You'd pick the glasses up. How do they sit there for eight hours? Excuse me, security. I think someone left their glasses here. But not for a large percentage of the world. Buying the shtick. Oh, this is art. This is just something else. Oh, stellar. Intellect. Oh, just uh, I. Uh, who could come up with something like this? And then everyone lines up to have their photos taken with it. The only thing the articles and like there's three or four of them on the internet. The only thing is, I, I didn't see anyone taking a selfie with the glasses right over their shoulder. 
Now that would be the perfect poster child for exactly what we're talking about. So don't fall for any headline other than your own. No more heartburn. No more worrying. Everyone's focused on weight loss. Everyone. The quickest way to do it is to end the binge thinking, to get rid of the stress. Because when we're stressed, we look for comfort foods. When we're stressed, we look to binge thinking. Because at least if our mind is focused on something, it's not focused on what it is we think we're distressed about. But the bottom line is, when you leave your mind on the threshold of thrill, which you absolutely deserve in your life, when you leave your mind at its cognitive cutting edge, when you're prepared to be in awe of who you are, what you are, where you are, a human mind alive in the labyrinth, when you're in awe of that, these stresses start to fall away. And it's wired in us from a very early age to look for outside sustenance, to look for someone to give us a hug. I get it. But when we can get to the stage where we can give ourselves a hug and mean it, when we can look into our own, awe, our own eyes with a sense of awe, that's the beginning of healing. That's the beginning of mending our minds. And it's our lack of confidence that keeps us in the comfort zone. It's not laziness. It's a lack of confidence. And as we said yesterday, you're born with absolutely all the confidence you need to work the red carpet, to steal the show, to wow the crowd and the world. It's already in you. So will today... Coming into a holiday weekend here in the States. Will today be the day you get off your own back? You want to have a brat at a holiday cookout? Have a brat. Oh, I'm on a diet. I say, if you're going to go on a diet, diet on the idea of going on a diet. I say we take a time out. From the worry, oh, I've got to get in a size, whatever. I've got to have a 30-inch waist. I have to do this or do that. If you're out and about and moving around, you know, they say the people that are really successful at weight loss, that, that really stick to it, become insane about it. They watch everything they eat. They log every moment of aerobic exercise. When do they live? When do they have life? When do they throw themselves into the impromptu? The improv. You ever wonder why improv comedy is so popular? Because that's the way we're supposed to live our lives. Full improv. So when we think of the stress of trying to conform to other people's shtick, other people's headlines, no wonder we're vacuums running around looking for something to fill. See these signs driving around, landfill wanted. Or I've got landfill for you. You know, I was, remember, I think it was like last year when Apple decided it was going to go ahead. And you automatically, you woke up one morning on your iPhone, your iPad, however you get your iTunes. Uh, was it U2? I think it was. U2, an entire album already on your iPhone. No charge. We're covering it already on there. And some people woke up and went, oh, wow, that's uh, really cool. Thanks, Apple. I got some music. I got something for nothing. But then there was a large group of people, of which I happen to be one, that said, I didn't ask you to put that music on my iPhone. I didn't ask you for a handout. I didn't ask you for free music. How are you even sure I like that music? And I wasn't alone. And I suspect if you're listening to the show, you're of that same mindset. You're of that same thing. <laughs> You're on that same plan, that same path with me. It was very nice. A group of walkers that always come by every morning just happen to stop, wave, and say, hey, would I like to come on a walk with them? Every so often, if I can play like a longer 
like one of my 15 second breaks, I'll run out the door, leave some bottles of water for them on the sidewalk. So when they come back around again, there's bottled water there. So they just wave, said hello. Good luck on your run, your walk. You're meandering today. It is the meandering mind, not the girdled, that always finds its path. So when you and I are meandering, what if we don't want someone downloading their music into our iPhone, our iPod, our iPad? What if, just like when Apple downloaded it, what if we don't want the opinions of other people? What if we're not going to treat ourselves like pin cushions today, waiting for some pin? What if we're not? Same thing. Don't let them download their music into you. It's your song. It's the path that you're here to be on. Why would we let that happen? Why do you ever let it happen? Because we know when we live life to the fullest, no more head games, no more heartburn for your head. When you live life to your fullest, you don't have time for other people to download their music onto your iPhone. You're busy out being you, meandering, sauntering, taking the lefts, the rights, the pivots, the swerves, the ups and downs. Whatever the shift happens, whatever that is in the labyrinth, You're in. You're doing it. You're moving it. You're living life the way nature intends. We'll be right back. IPMNation.com All right, so for the 20-minute victory today, what could you do? Well, how about you and I meander? Can I share with you a little thing that I do from time to time? I'll go to, say, a grocery store or a bookstore or a magazine store, read the title of a magazine, maybe walk down an aisle, see what jumps out at me. Maybe go, sit on one of the park benches, watching people go by. This morning, had I done it, I'd have seen a deer sprint. (laughs) Probably leap right over the park bench. But you meander. Give yourself a time out, a little bit of a break from all the carrots, the ends of all your sticks, and just meander. Maybe go for a walk. And don't go either left or right until that moment. Then you go, okay, I think I'll go straight here. Or maybe I'll turn around here. And then go back and go a right and a left. But just meander. And you can do it physically, but you can also do it philosophically. You can meander. In your own mind, we talk about inner orienteering. Wait and see what thought pop up. Because we know when we live in the unimaginable power of this present moment, that's the mystery. That's the magic. All kinds of cool things pop up. And when it comes to getting to the root of all of our stresses, meandering does a great job to attack them. Because just for a moment, just for a moment, you get to go, eh, I'm going to abandon them. I'm just going to go out and saunter. There's a word, saunter. I'm going to go out and meander. I'm going to go out and just kick around. Enjoy the fact that I'm here, that I'm able to breathe, that I'm able to move, that I made it out of bed this morning without getting called home, without bumping, into the <laughs> without bumping into the grim reaper when the alarm clock went off. The alarm goes off, you look up, there he is with his hood, his big sigh. But that didn't happen to you, that's pretty cool. We can go, hey, I'm here for another day, another run in the labyrinth. And we just meander with no particular place to go. One of my favorite scenes of all time in a movie, Tom Hanks is on a desert island. And you'd think since it was such a huge movie, I could remember the title now, but I don't. But he's stranded on an island. If you know the name of the movie, 
give me a holler, would you? 331 S O U L 7685. Or just hit me up on Twitter at Brian Brody. It's not marooned. It wasn't stranded. What's the name of that movie? In any event, he builds a relationship talking to, I think it was Wilson, his uh, volleyball. But the very end of that movie, what has always been indelibly burned into my mind, the very end of that movie, delivers his package, and he gets to a crossroad. And that crossroad, thank you, Castaway is the name of the movie. Thank you very much. 331-684-SOUL. See, news you could use. Thank you very much. Castaway is the movie. But at the very end of the movie, he's at a crossroad. He can go straight. He can go back. He can go left. He can go right. But in that moment, it was his decision. No carrots at the end of the stick. He did what he needed to do. He delivered the FedEx package that he had held on to. Delivered the FedEx package. And then gets to the crossroad and can do whatever he wants. So for our 20-minute victory today, what if you allowed yourself that type of meandering? What crossroad would you find yourself at, physically or philosophically? Where you could go, hmm. I think I'll go left. Or you could say, I think I'll sit right here. I may not go anywhere at all. But we can begin to mend our minds. We can begin to reprogram how our brains work with meandering. And that's the coolest thing. I say all the time, uh, neuroplasticity in a nutshell. That's the coolest thing about it. We really can alter the way our brains work the way our bodies work in conjunction with our brains, we can alter that with our attention, with our focus. I was going to say the word attitude, but then you hear you know, people go, oh, I, I PMA, positive mental attitude. No, no. Just awareness of where you are in the moment. The poet Donahue that I mentioned earlier. I would love to live like a river flows carried by the surprise of its own unfolding. Let the moment around you unfold. And if it scares you to death to think of doing this, absolutely the reason we should. All right? The things that scare us the most, that's how our mind got girdled in the first place. Oh, I couldn't have that happen. Don't want to have that happen. So let me just stay girdled. Let me just follow the, connect the dots, paint by numbers. Let me just line up here to take a picture of these glasses lying on the wooden floor. Maybe I can post it to Instagram later. Scares the crap out of us. That means we got to do it. So throw off the girdle. Throw off the boundaries. Throw off the blinders and meander. And I'm so confident that this will work for you. Drop me a line. Let me know where you ended up. But when you do this, your mind goes, finally, He gets it. Finally, she's figured me out. Let's just be happy. Remember yesterday, a Polinaris quote, (laughs) every so often it's a good idea to abandon our pursuit of happiness and just be happy. So go, meander. Take the kids, take the dog, walk the cat. Go with your significant other, whoever that may be, and meander. No particular place to go, yet everywhere to be. 20-second victory might very well be. When that voice of dissent pops up, you go, okay, I get it. Take a little break. We'll be okay. We don't have to constantly be vulnerable to our future. We don't have to constantly be susceptible to the stress and worry of what happens if it doesn't unfold the way we want it to. Just meander. Enjoy the day. Be thankful that you're here. Be grateful. And wait and see what the labyrinth throws at you. I can imagine. Now, I'm not a huge fan. But I can imagine if you are, and you ride roller coasters, 
let's say you go to an amusement park and, and, and maybe you have a season's pass or a year-long pass. I don't know how it works, but you ride the same roller coaster over and over and over. Okay, I climb here, I drop here, turn right here. At some point, does that roller coaster ride because it's planned, it's etched in stone, because you know what it is that's going to happen, does it get old? Again, I don't know. Does it get boring? Do you look for another roller coaster ride? We abandoned our attachment to the awe that we are. We abandoned it very early on in life. We were conned. We were grifted. But that awe, that's something about to happen in the moment, that impromptu, that's what we get with meandering. The mind can't plan what's going to happen. It doesn't know. No more, honest to goodness. I know it sounds like I'm trying to tie it all in. Sitting here this morning, the first thing I heard were the cars screeching together. And the next thing, I felt this. I could feel the deer's hooves on the sidewalk as it came from my left to my right. Almost jumped sideways into the window. And I'm watching as other people are pointing and the deer's taking off down the street. Well, when you go out and meander, that same sense of, holy cow, did you just see that? Well, that's what the mind is here for. Your mind is here for. It digs the new. Your neurons are built for the new. They're built to unfold. Sure, we can all have our rituals. We can have our habits. I'm not, our, our, our healthy habits. I'm not tossing those. I'm just saying every so often, give your habits a break. Sit on the side. Let them sit. Take a time out. And then you go and wander around. And experience the, sh- the sheer joy of being in awe of whatever you encounter. And then you move from there to your next little encounter. And then from that encounter to the next one. And just see where you end up. I have a walking meditation. Sometimes I'll hit a big field. I'll close my eyes and I just walk. And then whenever it moves me, I'll turn to the left, I'll turn to the right, I'll do an about face, turn around and go straight back, all with my eyes closed. Now be careful if you're going to do this in other than a massively large field. Because I practiced a couple of times. I took a lamp off a table one time. So <laughs> don't be like me. I say that all the time. Don't be like me. But I promise you, if you do this little exercise, and if, you're, if their area is a little smaller than some of the ones I find, then say every five feet, I'm going to make a left, a right. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to swerve. I'm going to go off on an angle. Leave your eyes closed. And you'll see how the mind has conned us into believing we always have somewhere to be. We always have to have a goal. You want a goal? Be goalless for 20 minutes. Meander, saunter, roam around a bit with no particular place to go and everywhere to be. And neurosciences tell us now that that's the key to mental health. That yes, there are some rituals. You get up in the morning, brush your teeth, get up in the morning, make your bed. That's a popular one now. Have some rituals, some things you do. Maybe you're driving to work. You always stop at the same place. Maybe you drink coffee. You get a cup of coffee. You pick up the same newspaper. I'm suggesting for 20 minutes, devote 20 minutes and act like you're in awe of where you are, of who you are to act the way the mind was intended to grow. It unfolds based on the circumstances it confronts in the moment. But when we pigeonhole ourselves, when we run from the rabbit holes of adventure, when we live our life like an expedition, we have an expectation, got to have an expectation, got to have an expectation, got to have an expectation. Huge reasons, regions, excuse me, huge regions of our mind most certainly our inner superhuman, our body. Huge reasons go, what are we doing? Where's the adventure? Where's the awe? Oh, don't worry. I'll retire, then I'll have awe. Okay. What if you never make it to retirement? Tick, 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 tick. Ding. 
We never know when the ding's coming for you and me. So this weekend, 20 minutes devoted to yourself. Because your search for awe takes place a good bit closer to home than you think. Because you are always on the threshold of being thrilled with who you are when you give yourself that permission. When you remind yourself of who you are, that's the beginning of living at the cognitive cutting edge because you know you can handle it. I would love to live like a river flows, carried by the surprise of its own unfolding. What if you could live your life like that for 20 minutes? Not sitting on the couch watching something on TV. Really being active physically and mentally. Getting up. Doing some orienteering. Whatever life throws at you. Because when you do that, the mind is going to feel refreshed. It's going to feel emboldened to be who it is. That's the path to finding your brand to finding the story you're supposed to tell while you're here. That's the key. Oh, I don't want to get too far away. Uh, Our 20-minute victory winner for this week, Patricia, following up on Tammy of last week. So thank you all for the uh, reposts and the shares and the likes and the tweets and everything else. I'm looking forward to hanging out with Patricia, working for 20 minutes, 172nd of her day with the sole focus of being devoted to her heart and wait and see what the labyrinth unfolds when she is because that's the key to our happiness there's no future down the road end point the now is the end point every single time every single time so what would you do People say, oh, you know, that's not for the faint of heart. Baloney. There is no such thing as faint of heart. There are times where we've forgotten who we are in our heart, but our heart isn't faint. Our heart isn't faint. It's like why I constantly go off on self-help. Your self doesn't need any help. Your self is great. Your heart is great. Your reservoir of your natural resources is all great that you've decided to turn your back on them, that we've decided to ignore them. It's not their fault. Don't blame them, faint-hearted. What a boatload of crap. It's simply people who have forgotten who they are in their hearts. That I'll sign off on. And the quickest way to be reintroduced to that heart is to have the confidence to meander. To be able to say to the divine, however you decipher and define it, thanks for the run. I'm going to come in hot and light it up. I'm going to kick in some doors. I'm not going to read a murder mystery. I'm going to unfold my mystery. I'm going to see what the labyrinth has in store for me. Who knows who you'll meet? Who knows who you'll bump into? Who knows who you won't meet? (laughs) Who knows who you won't bump into? That's the beauty of it. That's the adventure. That's the improv. And that's the way to begin to mend our minds. Right? Because if we want to own anything, how about we start by owning our own minds? Our egoic mind, it works for us. We don't work for it. Binge thinking. What did I say earlier? No, not Weight Watchers, but Thought Watchers. That'll be my next company, Thought Watchers. Knock it off. No more binge thinking. Sit. Take in a deep breath. Exhale. Scan your horizon, inner or outer. Then think. Then talk. Then take action. Don't be reactive to everything going on in the labyrinth around you. Build that ego wall, that ego shield, that moat, (laughs) 
<laughs> so that the binge thinking doesn't get the chance to automatically kick in. <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't say because I don't only get me in trouble, but I know of someone who has two uh, young kids and from time to time <laughs> at the end of a long day after she's just been a, a, a jungle gym, like the tour director, the athletic director, the yoga director, the jungle gym, for these two young boys, you'll find her in different parts of the house. And at times, I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just, <laughs> maybe if they can't see me, I can get two minutes to myself. And she's so cute. Every time I see her do that, that's a real life representation of the ego shield. Because whenever our binge thinking kicks in, if we could just get a little bit of a break so that our crazy thoughts can't make eye contact with us, right, and start to run the show all over again, we have a little cubbyhole. We have a little retreat. We have our man or our woman cave. We're our own security detail, our own protection detail. We can get in and just get a little break from all the craziness, all the running around that we can meander in our own mind without all the binge thinking. And it resuscitates who we are. Although I've never asked her, I'm sure she comes out of these little timeouts revived, ready to go at being a human jungle gym (laughs) once again. But when it comes to your ego shield, when it comes to building that little bit of distance, You can do it meandering. It's just great practice. Because when you're out meandering, and that part of your mind, the binge thinking kicks up, uh, oh, did I leave the toaster oven on? Uh, Did I lock the front door? Uh, Is it going (laughs) to raid? And all you do is you just meander. And when the egoic mind kicks in, oh, well, I've got dinner to make. I've got to send an email. I've got to check. I saw this thing last night on the news where a foreign government is going to make it illegal if you have more than 50 people in your company. Make it illegal. (laughs) They're going to make a law making it illegal for your business to text you on your days off, on your weekend. As opposed to, I guess, just (laughs) turning your phone off, right? (laughs) But I guess they need a law saying employers can't reach out and touch someone. Well, let's say you and I come up with a little law. We build an ego shield. Build a little bit of a buffer. So that we can own our own minds. And then we take that little bit of break. We come back refreshed. Armed with the lessons that we just learned in the labyrinth. Not of our choosing. But just of sheer coincidence. The sheer mystery of having been granted a human mind. That's the magic that we all look for day in and day out. That's the awe. That's the thrill. That's the cognitive cutting edge. Where we get to use our minds the way nature intended. And when we do that, our confidence is poised for a huge comeback. Watch the binge thinking, and the stress will fall away. That's all it is. The root cause of all stress is expectation. So give yourself 20 minutes, one seventy second of your day, and go, I'm not going to have any expectation. Just going to be. Just going to breathe, just going to take it all in. All the sights, the sounds, the feelings, the smells, all of it. I'm going to take it all in, in this moment, right here. Magnify the moment. And I guarantee you, you'll come back with a smile on your face. Smiling like you mean it. Because when you put forth even the, uh, the, just the most modest effort, those parts in you that are dormant see that as a wake-up call. If you tunnel towards them, those natural resources, 
You tunnel towards your all-natural being. It tunnels towards you. And that's the ultimate dovetail. You dovetailing heart and head with your all-natural being. And I promise you that will make this weekend, that'll give this weekend the honor. It'll be true to say that this was a holiday weekend because it's a break. Give yourself that break, meander. You'll be absolutely thrilled with the person that bubbles up when you do. So where will you go? 20-minute victory. Where will you go? Maybe just pick a time. You say, great, I'll do it for 20 minutes. I'll set my watch for 20 minutes, and I'm just going to go out and go wherever I want, see where I end up at the end of 20 minutes. Fantastic. I love that. Like Tom Cruise, the end of that movie, The Crossroads, could go wherever he wanted. Give yourself permission. Be devoted to yourself for this one little chunk of time, and you'll feel what I'm talking about. Absolutely guaranteed. I saw an article the other day where they say scientists are trying to solve this concept of awe. Why is it that we're tr- it triggers such a feeling in us? According to the article, it said, well, it, r- it erases the boundaries. We feel very compassionate. We feel very altruistic. I like that definition. If it breaks down the barriers between your individual packet of pristine and the universal pristine, if it serves to remind you of who you ultimately are, all the heartbreaks, all the alleged failures, all the trials and tribulations of the past, all the stress comes from worrying about those things replicating themselves in our future, we get to stop all of that. Be in awe with yourself, with your capabilities. And that's when you recognize you're a fraction of the universal pristine. There is an underlying connection. They talk in the story about how the first people that they were really able to study it with were astronauts that would go to outer space, look back at the planet. They had a very altruistic sense that we're all one. But you can achieve that same sense without having to buy a ticket on SpaceX. Save yourself the dough. <laughs> Put it towards something you'd like, an adventure that you'd like. You can do that when you allow your teeny tiny packet of the pristine to reconnect with the universal pristine. And we do that when we meander. Think back, Garden of Eden ejected off the savannas of Africa, rooted in our family tree, rooted in our genealogy, is meandering. Because whether it was Adam and Eve or our earliest ancestors walking off the savannas of Africa, they had no clue where they were going. It's rooted in our DNA to not know what's going to happen next. That's why we have fight or flight. Because when we have that confidence to go, I'm going. I'm not going to be slowed. Whatever the labyrinth throws at me, I'm going to handle. That's the root of who we are. No stress about it. We're hardwired with fight or flight. We'll deal with it in the moment. But whether you think we were evicted from the garden or tossed off the savanna, we meandered. And it's rooted in our biology. You want to talk about all natural being. That's what's underneath the bark of the tree. The ability to meander, knowing confidently that we can handle whatever is thrown at us. All right, we're going to get out of here. Once again, I forgot to read the hate mail. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that on Monday. I will still be here on Monday, even though it's a holiday, which would be kind of cool if you don't have to go to work. You want to get up, hang out live with me? That'd be great. You put that as a 20-minute victory? Well, it's an hour show, so it actually will be three 20-minute victories, but you get where I'm going with this. So we'll be able to nail it. I'll be here Monday morning, ready to go. 
Just do me one favor over the weekend, just one. Devote 20 minutes to yourself. Be your own best friend. Be your biggest fan. Get out of what you know and meander in the unknown. Because then you will have tapped into the energy that has fueled the human mind since it was very first dropped on this planet. And when you reconnect to that energy, when your individual pristine rejoins the universal pristine, <laughs> you're going to be ready to kick in some doors. Have a great weekend. Don't forget, allnaturalbeing.com. Leave me an email. I'll send you an email back. We'll hook up that way. Have a fantastic weekend. You've been listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Join us live every Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 a.m. Eastern. Also, check us out around the clock at allnaturalbeing.com. Until then, always remember to bring your own bold. Bring your own bold. The key to unlocking that bold is to meander. We'll hang out on Monday. IPMNation.com. 